you know, I said to my multidisciplinary team, do what you have to do to keep me alive, and I really meant it. A and mentioning the multidisciplinary team is critical. One of the radiation oncology nurses here. Patients, when they're first diagnosed with cancer, um, often are floundering and are very frightened. One of the key roles as a radiation oncology nurse is to support the patient through that diagnosis, through the continuum of care, of treatment, um, and follow-up appointments. So you actually end up getting a relationship with the patient long term. Today's your first day of treatment, I understand. When a patient's undertaking radiation therapy, the role of a nurse could be as simple as just sitting down and holding their hand and supporting them through that treatment. It may mean that we need to undertake some physical care for them, such as dressings, or um, education in regards to skin care, swallowing, nutrition, always supported by the experienced people um, who are the radiation oncologist as well as supportive um, service or allied services such as speech pathologist, uh, dietitian and such. And indeed we will often um, make those referrals to those services. And then, um, sometimes I'm feeling a little bit stressed about the, um, the treatment. As a radiation oncology nurse I also have a role in supporting the family. Cancer affects not just the patient, it also affects their loved ones. Um, and those family members are very scared, they need support. A nurse will be able to hear their concerns and perhaps direct them into supportive structure to um, allow them to care for their family members. Having a speech pathologist to help me keep swallowing, a nutritionist to help me not lose too much weight, uh, and also a psychologist to give me some skills to cope with the mask, uh, to cope with intrusive thoughts, to cope with fear of death, and in subsequent reco recovery, uh, to cope with fear of recurrence. They were as important as the radiation oncologist and the surgeon who kept monitoring me as I went. When it comes to the financial cost to individual patients, radiation therapy also can be a, a very cost effective treatment. A lot of radiation therapy is given in the public setting uh, and even with private radiation therapy most patients aren't paying more than a few thousand dollars maximum for their treatment. When it comes for surgery for instance, particularly done in the private setting, a good example of this is radical prostatectomies where 80% are done in the private setting. The cost to men out of pocket can be really large, many thousands of dollars, sometimes upwards of $10,000 out of pocket. We know from lots of evidence in Australia and around the world that one in two patients with cancer would benefit from radiation therapy at some time during their cancer pathway. Yet, even in this rich country, only one in three patients actually get radiation therapy. There are a few reasons for this, but one is the very low profile of radiation therapy compared to, say, surgery and chemotherapy, which people know a lot more about. One is just a, a lack of knowledge, both amongst the, uh, the general community, but also amongst health professionals, including, amazingly, even other cancer specialists, and also um, amongst general pra practitioners who are very important in um, making sure that patients get all their options uh, about their possible treatments uh, for their cancer. In the case of head and neck surgery and prostate cancer, um, head and neck cancer I should say, the surgeons are the ones that make the diagnosis. I, you know, I'm not accusing surgeons of, of, of anything bad, but they're surgeons and, and so as far as they're concerned, you know, that old thing about a chance to cut is a chance to heal and so they think that what they do, even though it may be unconscious, their unconscious bias is going to be towards referring their patients or recommending to their patients that they have surgery rather than uh, the other options, rather than even exploring the other options. And for us as general practitioners, it's a big call to say that we would actually cast aspersions on, on the surgeon's advice. That, you know, we spend half of our life trying to get our patients to trust the people that we refer um, them to, to actually um, go along with, with seeing them and, you know, and their advice. And here we are potentially saying, well, actually, 
let's look at this other option as well. And, and that's a big call. The consequences of missing out on radiation therapy where it might benefit you are very major. They could include not actually being cured of a cancer or possibly having uh, suffering from pain or poor quality of life as a result of other symptoms that could have been dealt with with the radiation therapy. In some instances, patients would be dying unnecessarily of their cancers because they haven't received radiation therapy. If a patient has a cancer that may um, benefit from having radiotherapy as treatment, then it's advisable that they see a radiation oncologist, um, sit with them, um, talk about their options, and then they can know whether or not radiotherapy is a good treatment option for them. And it's important for patients to take their time in doing that. Um, I certainly encourage my patients to see all of the relevant doctors, uh, to ask lots of questions, to read, uh, to talk to their family and friends, and to take the time to ultimately make their decision that will uh, impact them for many years. Since Lucas's treatment um, finished, he's, we've had no side effects. We've been back to the doctors numerous times and they, they regularly check his growth and he's, he's growing and his hearing's fine and he's growing up like a little boy, his speech is coming on, he's, he's just running around, he's perfect. He's, there's, there's no side effects that we can see that, that the radiotherapy may have caused. It, it, well, if somebody was to ask me whether they should entertain radiotherapy as an option for prostate cancer, I, I would most certainly say they should uh, entertain it as an option. Uh, in, in my particular case, I just had the standard radiation treatment, uh, and, um, and for me, I, I, I was very lucky that that seemed to have done the trick. And I then went after my treatment uh, and had a, a, a series of three monthly checkups. Uh, and these are, the, these, are, these are now six monthly checkups, uh, and uh, thus far, you know, all, all is a good news story. Even though the short term impact of radiation therapy for me as a head and neck cancer patient was really challenging, I would absolutely recommend it because I don't have any facial disfigurement uh, and I have function, and it's radiation that made that possible.